Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to add creative background designs to Divi's footer bar. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and I'll show you how to create these. Okay, so right now I'm in my admin dashboard. So the first thing we need to do is to go to the theme customizer because this is where we need to get rid of the color that comes in by default. Right, so I'm going to come over here to Divi, theme customizer. So what we need to do here is to come to footer and then we need to go to the bottom bar because this one has a color by default as you can see right here on the bottom. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is we are going to remove the color completely. So I'm going to come over here to background color, click on that and then I'm going to drag the slider all the way down to the bottom. Now we can see on the top here we have full transparency. But uh, of course we, um, it looks like nothing has happened here because we have a fallback color here which will change in the design. Okay, so now that we have this all set, you can also come over here to the text color and change the text color if you want. And over here you can also add your credits uh, because by default it comes with designed by elegant themes. So you may want to change this to your own um, settings. So let's say here I uh, renamed this to designed by Mac. Now you can see here as I'm typing, this is updating automatically, which is great. And then I'm just going to add my 2008, uh, 2018. <laughs> right. Okay. So I've got that now on there. So that's great. I'm going to click on publish and then I'm going to close out of this. Now we need to create the section background design for the bottom bar. So let's go ahead and create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages and click on add new. Uh, I'm just going to give my page a title. So I'm just going to call this footer, click on use the Divi builder, and then I'm going to click on use visual builder. Now over here, we don't have to uh, start with the pre-made layout. So what I'm going to do first of all here is to start building. So these options here, like I mentioned, you don't have to go into the pre-made layout. We can just go straight into build from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and we need a single row. So for now, we're not going to add any modules yet. So the next step now is to go into our row settings. So I'm going to click here on this little gear icon and now I'm in my row settings. And um, some of you may prefer to work with this snap to the left. So that's what I prefer. So I'm just going to do that so that I can see all my designs over here on the right. Okay, so now that I have this all set, the next thing we need to do now is to remove our padding on the top and the bottom and also add a bit of margin. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to come over here to design and then I'm going to search for margin. And then for the margin top, I'm going to add a zero to the top and zero to the bottom. Now to make this uh, process quicker, you can click this little chain icon here. So whatever value you add here on uh, the top will be applied also to the bottom. Okay, so I'm just going to add my zero. So now I don't have any spaces on the top and the bottom. Great. So the next step now is to add some padding. So I'm going to come over here and just search for padding. Right. So now we have a uh, padding. So the dimensions that we're going to need here is 80 pixels top and 80 pixels to the bottom. So I'm just going to add that. In fact, I'm going to activate my chain icon first. So 80 to the top. Now 80 is going to be applied to the bottom as well, which is great. Now, Here's the thing. We want our design to look great on all devices. So we might as well add our values on our mobile devices. So I'm going to come over here to this little icon here. I'm going to click on it. Now this gives me the ability to add my sizes to the tablet and also to the smartphone. So I've just clicked on this tab, uh, tablet tab. So here we're going to add 100 to the top and the bottom. The next step now is to go into our section settings and we're also going to add some values to our margins and also our padding as we did with the rows. So I'm going to save for now and then I'm going to come over here to the top left, click this little gear icon to get into my section settings. And then I'm also going to search for my margin. Okay, so for my margin, the desktop needs to be minus 55. So I'm going to add that to the bottom. The tablet now needs to be minus 94. So I'm going to click this little icon here, go into the tablet tab, and then I'm going to add my minus 94 here. And then finally, for my custom padding, we are going to add zero to the top and the bottom. Right. So I'm just going to get rid of uh, my search values here. And then I'm going to search for padding, activate my chain, add a zero. And this now will be applied both to the top and also the bottom. Great. So now that we have all this set, the next step now is to add our section dividers. So I'm going to come over here to the top, click on my settings, and then we're going to come over here to design. 
and then we're going to click on dividers. So because we are going to add our divider over here on the bottom, because we're designing the footer, ideally, we are going to need the bottom divider. So I'm going to select my bottom, click here on my divider style, and then all the way on the bottom here, I'm going to choose this as my style. Okay, so let's go ahead and customize this. Uh, next, our divider height needs to be set at 120. And uh, we might as well go in and set our sizes for our tablet and smartphone. So I'm going to click on this little icon right here, click on the tablet, and then we're going to set this to 150. Okay, and the same value is also needed for the smartphone. So the reason why we're doing this is because uh, when our website design is complete, our designs are going to look great both on desktops, tablets, and smartphones. Okay, so I'm going to slip back. I'm going to flip back over here to my desktop tab. Right, so the next thing we're going to do here is to set our divider horizontal repeat. So currently it's set at 1x, so we need to change this to 0.9. Okay, so we might as well uh, adjust our tablet and smartphone. So I'm just going to click this little tab. Now I'm going to go into the tablet tab. Now over here we're going to set this at 0.5. And then finally for the smartphone, we're also going to set it at 0.5. Great, so all is looking great. The next stage now is to flip our divider. So I'm going to come over here to divider flip and we are going to select this one right here like that. So right now we have a problem. I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, over here, our text on our, on our little footer here is not showing. That's because it's hidden. So what we need to do is to add some CSS code in order for this to work. So I'm going to come over here to advanced and then I'm going to click on custom CSS. So on the main element here, I'm just going to paste this little code here. So as you can see, this Z index zero has allowed our, our text over here to be now visible. Okay. So that looks great. Right. So the next thing we're going to do now is we are going to add our divider color because right now we just use the default that came with this divider. So I'm going to come back over here to design, click on dividers, and then we're going to go into, we're going to go to our bottom divider here, click on divider color, and I'm going to add this color right here. Now, if you want to use the same color as I'm using throughout this design, I'm going to leave a link to the post in the description below. Okay. So this is looking great. I'm going to go ahead now and save. So now with this basic structure, you have a very good foundation of building even more designs on top of this. So what we're going to do now is we are going to save this to the library so that we can use it in our designs on our pages. So to do that, I'm going to come over here and click on this little arrow here. I'm going to click here on the drop down. Now what you need to do is to give this a name. So I'm just going to call this bottom bar footer and then I'm going to save it to the library. So now every time I need it, I can just go to the library and insert it. Now you are ready to explore new designs. All you have to do is to make adjustments to the divider height and horizontal repeat values, depending on the divider style you choose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here to my theme customizer, and then I'm going to change my text for that footer. Okay. So I'm going to come over here to bottom bar. And as you can see, my color here is set to this gray. So we want this to be white so that every time we use a duck color, it will be shown easily. So you can see here on the social media icons that has changed. And then I'm also going to do the same to my text color, set this to white. Okay. So that's looking great. In fact, I might as well make it bold. Okay. So now let's go ahead and uh, try a few designs. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, click on design dividers, bottom divider. So now this is where you can experiment and try different uh, divider styles. So I'm going to click here on this drop down, and then I'm going to scroll all the way to here to the bottom and choose my style. So I'm going to go with this one here to start off with. And as you can see, it takes on the default colors, but of course we want our own custom customized color. So I'm going to select this color right here like that. And then over here, you can just play around with your height. So I'm just going to increase my height here like that. And of course, this is going to depend on the size of your screen as well. So right now I'm using a 27 inch. So this is why I have to bump this, you know, slightly higher than normal. Okay. So that's great. And then over here, you can also play around with your horizontal repeat. Okay. So you can increase it like that, or you can even reduce it. And then over here, you can also play around with your flip depending on how this is showing on your footer. Okay. So now that we have that set, I think this looks great. You can now go ahead and save. Now in the next example here, I'm just going to show you how to use the top divider as your style. So I'm going to come over here to the top. In fact, I need to um, get rid of the bottom one, go to the top, and then I'm going to choose my style. And this time we're going to choose these clouds. Next, I'm going to come over here to my section settings, 
click on background and we are going to add a background gradient. So I'm going to click this plus button here. So now we can see we have a gradient. So that looks great. Then I'm going to back, come back over here to my design, click on dividers. And then I'm going to play around with my height like that. I can even flip this if I want to, but of course that's, that doesn't look great at all. Okay. So uh, those are my clouds. Again, I mean, you can play around with these colors here to match your uh, design, but this is how easily you can create custom footers for your DV website. So once you have this footer all sorted, all you have to do now is to start adding all your content as normal. But of course, be sure to make sure that you add it on the top. So let's say I need to add uh, some content on here. I'm going to click on regular and then I'm going to add, let's say, my two columns here. So what I need to do now is to drag this to the top and then all my content now can go in this area. So let's say this is a blurb, save that. And then I'm just going to copy and paste it over here. So I'm just showing you, of course, how this would work, you know, on your actual website. So as you can see, the footer is going to stay always here at the bottom and then all our content here should be added on the top. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. And also, if you have any questions regarding these tutorials, please do leave your comments in the comments box below and I'll do my best to respond to all your questions. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.